Welcome back to my channel English Literature for Internet. Today my discussion will be revolving around Thomas Haywood who wrote the famous interlude The Four Ps and George Putnam uh, who was an important writer of that point of time. So I'll be keeping my videos uh, you know with less writers in it so that you know more information you will be able to imbibe. So let's begin the Lecture. Thomas Hayward, he was born in 1573 and he died in 1641. His chief strength lay in domestic drama. His chief plays are A Woman Killed with Kindness, acted 1603 and it was printed in 1607. The Fair Maid of the West, uh, it was published in 1602. The Chief English Traveller, his other chief plays were Four Pretenses of London, acted 1603 and printed in 1615. Ridiculed in Francis Beaumont, The Knights of Burning Pestle. So, from all the lectures which I have given, you can say that how many cross-reference you know things are given here, and that is the reason the cross-reference questions will be coming in internet, and that's where you know if you if you have good idea about the cross-reference then certainly you will be able to attempt the questions. Next work of Thomas Hayward was Edward Fourth, two parts, which was printed in 1599, The Rape of the Lucris, which was published in 1608, The Royal King and Royal Subject, printed in 1631. His An Apology of Actors, 1608, and it was printed in 1612, is the best Chekhovian summary of traditional argument in defense of the stage and some anecdotes. Haywood complains about William Jaggard's inclusion to from it in 1612 edition of the Passionate Pilgrimage which was ascribed to Shakespeare. So by this time you will see that a, a slight reference uh, to Shakespeare will start coming because uh, Robert Greene uh, told about you know William Shakespeare that he's an upstart crow beautified with our feathers. So what Robert Greene wanted to suggest here is that William Shakespeare was just getting the fruits of the foundation which was being laid by the University of Wits and uh, further I'll talk about the University of Wits, what, what is a University of Wits and which writers were there but basically Shakespeare got a lot of you know benefit from the University of Wits and also uh, if you uh, remember that William Shakespeare started his career as a you know he was he used to draw the curtains and that's where he used to watch closely the plays and he was able to get the uh, integrities of the you know uh, the plays and integrities of the plays and then uh, he would uh, also translated set uh, and published poems the hierarchy of blessed angels 1635 two plays uh, which was written in 1624 and the escapes of Jupiter, mildly erotic version of the golden silver ages. John Hayward's famous interludes. The four piece, the palmer, the padner, the poticary and the, uh, the paddler, it was written in doggerel verse. It ends with declaration of uh, loyalty towards church universal. The padner and the friar, which arbitrarily includes with attempt by the parson and the constable to drive away the hypocrisy away. So basically the hypocrisy which was seen in the churches uh, with the you know the interlude written by the John Hayward the kind of you know not officially but the uh, with the publication of four P's uh, the interlude the hypocrisy of the church was exposed and uh, that's how this particular you know interlude help a lot in uh, showing the hypocrisy of the church and then the uh, another uh, interlude was play of weather in which jupiter lis listens to the conflicting opinion as to the kind of weather to be supplied he would wrote a dialogues called witty and wittes collections of proverbs and epigrams and the spider and the fly which was written in 1556 nicholas Udal, Ralph Royster Doister, earliest known English comedy, translated selections from Terence and other works, 
and wrote Latin play on sacred subjects, which was written in 1552. Thomas Tusser of 500 paint 1573 complains of having been severely flogged by Odal. For fault but small or none at all is the another work by Nicholas Odal. He figures in Ford Madoc Fox novel The Fifth Queen which was written in 1906. Very important reference which, which is to be noted down here. And the another comedy that was written uh, was the Gamma Gurton's Needle, which was written in 1575. Native English tragedy was distinctly marked by blood high flown and somewhere influence of Seneca. Jasper Hayward, 1535 to 1598, the younger son of Thomas Hayward, published English translation of Seneca, Troyes, Testus, and Heracler Furens. Gorbodux or Ferrix or Porex are the English, earliest English tragedies. Three acts by Thomas Norton and the last two by Thomas Sackville modeled on Seneca tragedy, even narrated in, in blank verse. And just to be noted, you know, many of the poems uh, which were written in the blank verse, uh, those were written by the Shakespeare. And apart from that, some of the plays were also in the blank verse only. Sidney praised the play in his defense of poetry as being full stately speeches and well sounding. The legend of Gorbodok is told by Geoffrey of Monmouth and figures in Spencer's The Fairy Queen, where Gorbodok is called Gorbogod. Its story is derived from the Geoffrey of Monmouth's fanciful history of descendant of Trojan Brutus. The defense and practice of English poetry. Next, I'll be talking about George Potenham, who was born in 1529 and who died in 1591. He was born in Hampshire. He was educated at Christ College. He is the author of The Art of English Poesy which was published anonymously in 1589. And he divided the art of English poesy into four parts, which is the art of English poesy of poets, of poesy, of proportion, and of ornament. And he, uh, there are famous you know, uh, statements which he has given about various writers of that point of time. So he said that condemns John Gover for false orthography, he finds John Skelton a rude railing rammer and all his, his doing ridiculous. And then he praises Sir Thomas Viot and Earl of Surrey as a stars, stars of a new company of courtly makers. In the second book, he discusses only triffles such as anagrams, emblems, poises, showing a fondness for ocular representation in particular for poem like uh, eggs and pillars. The third book defines and illustrate various figures of speech suggesting new common terms Greek and Latin original like single supply, ringleader and middle marches, zeugma, prosgma and mesozugma. The dry mock irony, bitter taint, sarcasm and overreaches hyperbole. With this, I conclude my lecture and in my le next lecture, I'll be talking about uh, Philip Sidney who has written The Defense of Poetry.